Welcome, everybody, to March 9, 2021, Zoning Board of Appeals. My name is Marty Akins. I'm the chairman. Mr. Caveas is our vice chairman. Board members, Mr. Radell, Mr. McCarthy, Mr. Hemmel, Mr. Lee is here. Where is he? To Chin. Mr. Chin. Chin, Mr. Lee. What the hell am I doing? Yeah, I think he's trying Sorry. to get him. He just made four days on the board. He log out? Yeah, he logged out because he's trying to figure out how to get his audio. So All right. We so got let's go through this until uh, he logs back in and we can do those cases. We got a few things we can do with the uh, five of us right now. Uh, if I could, uh, Mr. Cabayas, could you uh, make a motion to waive the reading of uh, the minutes of 12, uh, 223, please? Mr. Taylor, I make a motion to waive the reading of the minutes from February 23rd. Second. On the motion, seeing none, voice vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Now we have uh, some old business here. I want to see if anyone sees. Is anyone here from 6 to 8 Old Colony Ave? 6 8 Old Colony Ave, raise your hand, make a flag. Start, was it Star 9? Yes, yes. Star 9. Is there anyone here for Old Colony Ave? Mr. Chin? Are you here? He is now. He is Russell. All right. I got it. No one's here. Mr. Cabeas, this is like two years old. The property's been auctioned. There's no applicant no more on this case. If I could, can we make a motion Motion to deny this project, please? Mr. Chairman, it matter number 20-36, RL Estate Development. LLC for a variance to demolish the existing structure and construct a new seven unit residential building on the premises numbered 6 8 O'Connelly Avenue. I make a motion to deny the variance. I deny the variance because there is no applicant in front of us. That'd be good. Second it. Second. On the motion, could I have, uh, yeah, I want, uh, who? No, he can't. He can't talk. There's no one talking on this. There's there's no one here to talk on it because the the, the property's probably going to come back to us. But since it's already over and the applicant isn't here, and we've had this two years, could I have a roll call vote, please? Yes. Mike Coveas. Yes. Charlie O'Brien. Yes. Russell Chin. <coughs> Russell. He's gone again. All right. Put Mr. Himmel in, please. John Himmel? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Marty Higgins? Yes. Okay. Uh, ZBA case number old business 2088, Paul Pinto for variance to construct an addition in the premise number 1026. C Street. Uh, where are we on this, guys? Mr. Pinto, are you here? Yes, Mr. Aikens. Yeah. Where are we on this? We're, uh, we've provided over previous surveys that were requested mm -hmm. in the last meeting. I think that was shared with the committee. And we're still seeking side, side variants. I have uh, Benny Burr on the line as well, too. But but we, we don't know about that road yet. We still, you were supposed to find out if that road is private or public. You said, I thought you said you were going to take care of that before this meeting. Yeah, no, uh, we provided, I'm sorry, Mr. Akins. We, we provided back surveys as far as we can go. We've got title search. Everything that we've pulled up shows private way. And I think the, the request was that um, Mr. McCarthy had, had potentially something else. But everybody, well, that's what we're going to have to do because... I'm hearing a lot different. I'm hearing someone's going to sell that one foot of land to other neighbors. There's going to be fights down there. That's what I understand. But uh, yeah. Mr. McCarthy, could you please uh, tell us what's going on here? Yeah, I wish I knew too, Marty. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, there's been a lot of back and forth in the last 48 hours between the yeah. owner, uh, Sean Farrell, I think Mr. Pinto, I think the people in the cul-de-sac and the mm -hmm. uh, spike line and the ownership is up in the air. Mm -hmm. uh, in regards to, I want to make, still want to make sure that that spike line is um, formally deeded to Mr. Farrell. 
Um, it does hinge a lot in regards to um, Mr. Pinto's thoughts on moving the fence over. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's still um, outside of, of um, your job, which is the um, zoning job in Mr. Pinto's edition, there's still a lot of factors that are um, completely confusing to me over there in regards to who's going to end up with what. And um, it's still, um, there's nothing, there's nothing, the, the cement hasn't uh, dried yet, Marty. So um, I don't know uh, what to say in regards to that. All I know is that um, I'm still trying to get the two parties together to come up with some type of agreement in regards to that private way, which is fine with the city for both of them to utilize, but I still don't think they've gotten together. So, but do we know who owns that piece of property, Mr. McCarthy? I, I haven't seen any deed in regards to that foot spite line. And I, I don't know. Well, uh, Mr. Radell, maybe you could bring something into this. You were saying something about you were looking up and I said, wait for the meeting to talk. Yeah, I, I tried to, I tried to do a, a, a search for the registry of deeds to try and find ownership of the spy line. I, I just saw the applicant have his hand up. Do you, you have, have you seen a, a deed on this, Mr. Pinto, that, that shows that, that there's ownership of the spy line? Yeah, so, so first off, <laughs> I'd like to, to stop using these, these terms spy line. It's lot six. It was subdivided back in 2008. I provided the subdivision plan to the committee. I'm happy to bring it up again here. That that was originally part of the rectory's property. That's where it was deeded. It was subdivided as lot six and remained that, right? And then every other lot was sold off and that one was not as well as parcel one. Now, with regard to what we're seeking still today, right? Our, our request is for variance from the 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 right side or left side whatever way you're looking at it of the private way and it's for side yard variance. It, it is not impacted by that fence i think mr mccarthy you had a discussion as well today with mr fleming and and the concern that was brought up was am i going to go put a fence up against lot six i i said i would not i'm okay with if we want to put a condition on that that that's not going to have a fence put up on lot six but there was never any question of, of that, right? And and we've gone back, we've pulled pulled every record we can to, to delineate um, that that private way. And I also have, if you need, I've got timelines that can show all of the deeds that refer back to that being uh, split out in lot six, as well as prior to the subdivision. I'd like to add to that. What, 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 can you tell me when that deed was dated? I just want to, I was just trying to look it up myself and I couldn't find it. Which, which one are you talking about? Lot when six. Was, lot six. Which shows, I think which we're shows talking the about. ownership of lot six. That's right. I, I can't find anything that shows lot six. Yeah, because it was subdivided. Um, sorry. It was subdivided in 2006. In the deeds. Yeah, that's, what, that's my, I pulled up that deed. That shows the transfer of ownership for for uh, or the 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 lot that you're trying to purchase, not lot six, the other one there, whatever you're calling parcel, that. Parcel one. Parcel one. I show parcel yeah. one, but I can't find anything for that it references this lot six. Well, uh, if if it's okay, is it okay? I share a screen. I can show up. I can pull up. I have a some stuff I put together if that helps. And where did you get this from? These are all from the registry of deeds. I also I have why we couldn't find it because I yeah. I also have the subdivision plan, right? Because that's what's filed. It's the subdivision plan, which which illustrates lot six. But prior to it becoming lot six, it was part of um, lot four. No, prior to becoming yeah. lot six, it would have been part of a prior subdivision, which would have been called lot two and lot one. And when lot two, what well, lot one was subdivided, it would have created the further subdivision which is now called lot six. But I, I believe Benny, my, my, my architect had a comment that, that probably would help clarify. Right. But you have two front, you have a, 
if, if that's a street, if that's a street, right, Mr. Duba, isn't that two front front setbacks? If you that would be a front. Both fronts, right? Oh, then would be front. Right. So it'd be two front front yard setbacks, twenty five feet. He still has to repair it. No, I know, I know. I'm just saying, but if, if the streets ever, who knows? I, I don't know if the city owns it or they own it. Uh, 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 who? I don't know. I don't know. So you're saying lot six. That's a private street. Then. No, no, no. Lot six is the sliver, Marty. The sliver there. I see the sliver on lot six. But then, then lot lot five. Right? No, where am I here? Lot, lot one, right? Parcel one supposedly yeah. acquired Has, lot six. At right. Some point. Yeah. Right. Like what you're, you're telling us? I mean, it sounds like I got the original here. That that's you know. I just I got you know one, two, three, four, five. It sounds like no you have a wonderful six. land court decision. No lot six on this. Does it does it help, Mr. Riddell, if I if I pull up the screen and 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 have it so everybody's seeing at the same time what we're talking about? I mean, yeah. I mean, I'm looking at the plans that you sent over the other day. If that's what you're going to share, I'm looking at the same thing. I'm, I'm. Those are the I'm same ones we have. We the, have the distinct ownership change, where it goes from. You know, if I look at the survey you sent over for uh, the registry plan, which showed the two plots of land. So, right, you got lot one, lot two, one. and parcel one, right? And then it changes over four to five. On the other that, side. That, that's back from. That's where that one foot comes from, four and five. So, so then it changes over, Mr. Medell. You were saying, I'm sorry, you were saying it changes over from. That changes, yeah, so in 2006, that changes into this five, five, this six parcels, I mean, six lots plus parcel one. And then, and then you, and then we have the, the you know, the most recent, which. You, you, I, I can't find the ownership being attached to parcel one is what I'm talking <laughs> about. Oh, oh that's September. That was September of 207, right? Yeah. yeah, but if you go pull up that land court decision, there's no reference of lot six being attached to parcel one. It, it's oh, not. It's two separate, it's two yeah. separate transactions, Mr. Riddell. That's right. Or two separate lots, but they're they're being transacted as one one joint transaction. No. There, there's two there's lot six has never been deeded to anybody because it was part of the original uh, the subdivision right and then part but of who the owns line, it who owns it it has SPS, to be deeded to somebody sps still owns it from their original right. subdivision Mr. i agree Mr. so Charles. they deeded it to themselves no nope. when they sub when they subdivided the parcel that they bought from the yep. church yep he retained that piece yeah. And then he broke the other lots out. He sold right. all the other lots out and retained that. Then why so, wouldn't it be deeded to somewhere? Because he, he retained it. He didn't. He, there's no need to deed but it. He don't he just own owns, nothing else here, right? That's right. It's it's true. He doesn't. But he owns that one foot wide strip. Well, he owns then why both. if he owns you own parcel. something, you wouldn't have a deed. So you pay taxes on it. He also you, owns you, can, you can own whatever you want. <laughs> right, but you got to deed it somewhere to say you. No, you don't it. have to deed it. No, if you, no, it's, if what's, you, it's what's left from the original. Right. Lot one. Yeah. So and there would so, be no okay, deed out. The way, Hold up, everybody! That, Hold up, everybody! Mr. Cabeus, go ahead. You take away. You have lot one. Mm -hmm. You divide. You subdivide it. Yep. You toss it out. The one thing you leave is this one little foot lot. Yeah, which you pay because you didn't sell it, and so whoever owned lot one back then, when the subdivision was made, the plan was made, was is the owner. Okay, okay right. but who pays taxes on that? I just want to know. It would be the guy who never let go of it. So, All right. and is it anywhere who, in the city records that he owns lot one? No. Then, then I could transfer a property anytime I wanted to, split it up and take sixty feet, and just say I own it still, not pay taxes well, on it. You own, you own your lot right now. Yep. You sell it to me, but you retain yep. one going all the way up the length of the property. I hear you. You own that still. Yeah. I don't. But who pays no taxes? Well, you pay taxes of that little piece, I suppose. So I'd have that's to register that's with the city. Question. I mean, that's yeah. what the assessor does. Right. Right. So, I mean, it, it, I just it, want to make sure this piece, this lot one is really lot one and it's real. It's just not on a piece of paper someone did and, they, and then they just never did anything. 
You That's mean, all I'm saying. Where's the well, paperwork to prove not, all of this? I'm not very comfortable with this either. No, I know. I'm not either. I, I, I'm not comfortable to, with who owns what and where in deeds and uh, I, I, well. So, Mr. Akins, if, if I could just interject, right? If we remove lot six out of the conversation for a moment, right? Yeah. And we focus in on parcel one and our addition going on that side. We're, we, lot six was never being, there's nothing I'm going to do on lot six. Let's all be clear. Nothing is going to happen there. There's nothing that can be done. I'm concerned about parcel one and the addition on that I side. I know you are, but I'm concerned about a private way, a public way in lot six right now. Who owns these? So, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, point out that we had a survey done by a uh, certified um, uh, land surveyor, and they mm -hmm. did their, uh, professional due diligence. And this is the only thing that we have to go by, and it says private road on it. So right. We have not seen any anything to suggest to us that it's not a private road. All right. Well, now, All right. But that raises the question of this: if it's a private road. Who owns that private way right and and in the in parcel private one way. in parcel one's deed actually states to the center line of the private way that's right cool. and so what you want is the center line of the other direction too so you basically want the whole private way no no well no he's, he's only he's, going halfway he's saying the private way you're going to go halfway i'm not even touching the private way again i, I understand that but you can use up to half of it you're saying yeah. Well, I would have, I, I currently have today, I have uh, with the, the, the current parcel I own, I have rights into that. This parcel one would complete that one side of the, the rights. And then lot six was just to give the other, the other side of the rights. You, I thought you didn't buy parcel one yet. They're both under the agreement. Both are under agreement. You, haven't, no, you haven't bought them yet. They're under agreement with contingency. Yep. On uh, yep. Everyone else just listen to me and tell me if I'm out of my mind. <laughs> What I'm thinking about now is this. If you have use of the private way from your current property in parcel one, then it goes to tell me that if you take lot six, six you have the other half of the public way. That's right. The public way of the way, whatever the way is. So that means you really are coming here. You're really right, going right, to right. take the whole public I see what you're way. saying. Yep, yeah, you're right. Saying. Yeah, you're right. Mr. And Mr. Here's, here's, what, here's what I'm saying. Here's what I'm saying. We went through this on, on uh, Oskwell Street. Uh, people saying they both use half the street and they've always used half the street. And it's, and it's a private way. It wasn't. It was, it was a public street. Someone had to end up moving. Uh, when they, when they figured this all out, they had to move their shed. Yeah, I'm familiar and, with and that case. And it's a street. Right, that nothing could be on. So this is another thing. I, you know, we, we keep hearing private, private, and then we're saying uh, somewhere uh, the councilor said that it's really the city owns that street to go down to the to the to the to the bay or the. It's well, nothing now, but a hundred years ago, I don't know when they had walls down there. Mr. So, McCarthy, go ahead. Um, <clears throat> just I, I went because we started off with this months ago. Mm -hmm. with the private public and when the last time i came out of public works mr chen in public works who does a heck of a job engineering um came out with it as a public way now those recent norfolk county deed documentations we got said private way so i was still confused if it was public or private it says private but he was adamant it was a public way um so that's what uh mr timmons and i went with mr mccarthy if i if i could right i think you're referring to the to the nortman pond or nortman park that mr sang pulled up we went back all the way to that time and looked at those deeds as well and even in those deeds it accepts that piece of land it doesn't even talk about that and it calls it unnamed street and continues to refer to it as a private way. We also went back to a street widening map from 1912, which reflects to it as a private way. I'm happy to enter in those so folks can see if you'd like. 
right? But I know what I know what I'd feel comfortable in Spinto, and, and I and I hate to do this. Uh, and give us two weeks. I thought this was all going to be. You had everything we needed, and after hearing the council saying he was adamant that is a, a Quincy Street, I really I really got a. I wouldn't feel comfortable tonight unless I know that's a private street, not a public street. And also, Mr. Chairman, if I may, yep. if it's a private street, who owns it? Yeah. Someone has to own it. Right. If it's a paper street that is a, a public way, private right. property, it's owned by the city. If the city doesn't own it, who does? So, yeah. on the deed for parcel one, yep. it distinctly says to the halfway point of the private way. But my question is, why would it be that way? If I own so that he land, has half, I'm a private half, citizen, I own that land, you're not yeah. going to take care of my land. It has to belong to somebody or some entity. We, we've I gone. think that entity is going to be the city. I mean, it does say public way here of this plan. It says mm -hmm. Paper Street on another one. Uh, Paper Street belong to the city, unless I'm wrong. But I can be. I have been. Yeah. I mean, we have the, we've had the situ situation here. We had it in, I mean, I had it down at the end of my, it's a big, there was a big argument that the city had to get involved with it as well. You know, I mean, it's a similar thing, it's a private way that owners have used land, but it's really, mm -hmm. not. Could I, yeah. could I, could I make it on Oswald street? Could, could I, could I make a request? Can, can we, yeah. can we table this for 10 minutes and Dave, can you call me so we can chat real quick apparently and, and try to come to, because, I understand, Dave, that that you've been, you know, fostering for 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 the other side of the neighborhood, right? I have. I don't think anyone's fostering. I think he's trying to. He was no. trying to get an agreement yeah. with everyone there, and make everybody happy about <laughs> fences and all that. But that's not the issue right now. That's not our issue as a board. Our issue as a board is what I'm asking you. Can we do this in two weeks? I'll make sure I'll go out and do all the work that I got to do and go there and I'll pull up every document I can find. I'll sit with the city. I'll sit with the assessor. Someone's got to own this property and pay something. That's all I want to know before I go. I'm, I'm used to say in 20 years from now, the city owns this and they want to put a street in there. And you got your, your house is two feet from the street. Yeah, that's Frank, That would bother me. Understood. If, if and the I'm house coming around and your house is two feet away. Under, understood. Respect. Respect that. And I'm and I'm happy to provide you. Like I said, I, I've gone mm -hmm. and done extensive amounts of research. All right. So we, we all. I'd love to go down and grab all that stuff with you and sit yeah. with you, and then I'll go back up to the city and see what we can get there. If, but I need you to ask for the continuance because I've already done this. It would have to be you. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I can I can just just ask to put it off for two weeks. Let us all do our homework, okay. Dave. I'll catch up with you. We'll go up to the city. Anyone, yeah. Ms. Bayes, you want to sit in? Anyone on the board want to come up there? And let's let's use our brains and find out what's going on with the street. Yes, Mr. McCarthy. And, Chairman, thank you. Um, <clears throat> there's no fostering or anything with the other side. My whole thing is just to square this unique little typical house neck um, mystery land. Yeah. that I've run into before, but never a spite line, um, and try to figure out where you guys can put that fence, Mr. Pinto, and we're going to leave it alone so both the cul-de-sac and your addition all happen and that corner cleans up. Sure. And that's wonderful. But I'm confused, as Mr. Covas was saying, somebody owns it, and we get into this private public Someone documented it private. Someone documented it public. We talk about Nordstrom Park back there, Manit Lake. You know, yeah, different that's things that's back in the early 1900s. And I want to make sure I get it right so that the cul-de-sac isn't impacted and you make out with your addition. And that's been my whole task the last four well, months, I think, we've been going Mr. through. But I also need you and Mr. Markarian and Mr. Chen and the guys on the other side of the fence to get together and talk and not make calls every three weeks and I didn't get you. Go around the fence or have them come around the fence and you guys got to figure it out. We can get this done. So, so with all due respect, Mr. McCarthy, I've attempted 
on numerous occasions. Mr. Higgins, I didn't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. I know you're trying no, to- No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've attempted on many occasions to reach out to the neighbors. I, I think there's two points that we're trying to we're trying to cut slivers here, right? Is it the fence or is it the private way? We, we got- they, I'm worried about the- I'm worried about the private way. I don't care about the fence. You guys will figure that out whenever who owns the property. Exactly. But I, I agree on that. I'm worried about both. I'm worried about the- the right answer on the private public way and i'm worried about where that fence ends up because i want to make sure that that area is fairly divvied up and the city again the city could go in in the private way if public way and put our own fence up on both sides and make it a right away if we wanted to but we don't want to do that we want you and the boys on the other side of the fence to come to an agreement and figure it out yeah, I, I, I've made my attempts, Mr. Mur Mr. Uh, McCarthy. I'm, I'm not sure how I how I enforce other sides to participate. Uh, well, Mr. McCarthy, if you could, if you could get a meeting meeting with everybody, just call four participants, whatever we got there, and say we're going to have a sit down this day, and we'll have the documents and stuff probably by then. If you could do it in a week or so. Okay, Mr. O'Brien. Right, I'm asking for a chain of the deeds back as far back as they go to the subdivision for parcel one and for the major parcel, the complete chain of deeds back. Huh? That's, That's legitimate, crazy. right, Mike? Because that'll show ownership. I can Ms. share that. Yeah. You got it. I mean, well, Ms. Cabez, what do you think of that? Well, I, I think that I'm not sure if that's going to be the answer to the question. Though. All right. I, I don't know if that's going to really answer the question as to who owns the way. But it'll tell you if there's rights in the road itself, because it'll say that this parcel has a right in here to halfway and the other side. It'll 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 tell you that in those or it'll tell you when they laid the road out at the subdivision. If you have the D chain there, it'll tell you. I know. I think, though, the problem is that the way was established before the subdivision. The way right. probably established over a hundred years ago. Yeah. Right. There still should be deeds. Yeah, I, 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 I have all those deeds, Mr. O'Brien, and I'm hold, and I hold, up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, Miss Pinto, please. Mr. O'Brien and Mr. Uh Cabeus were talking. Go ahead, gentlemen. Well, I, I would like to see a survey done now. I would like to see a title report by someone who does title reports. And I know that costs money, but it's. Um, yeah, but and I would my, also and I would also like the city solicitor to tell us what his opinion is, and Dave can help us with that. Uh, you know, he's already the councilor has already spoken to the solicitor about this, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if I understand, councilor, the solicitors of the opinion that this is a public way. Yes, there has to be a so, document. Yeah, it's got to be someone that got to own it. Someone has to own this. Someone. So, <laughs> just to jump in on Charlie's comment, yep, I think ahead. we're going to end up seeing a private way document, and we're going to see a public way document, mm -hmm. and that's the part that that was the spin. Then you, then you're going to have to figure this out in, in, with the participants in that if it's if it's public. I mean, if it's private, but I think but it, somewhere I, down there. This, there's a lake down there, somewhere down there, 100 years ago, there's a lake, and they wanted a road there, and they wanted rights for the neighbors to get down there. Right. And, That's Mike, right. Um, a member Coveus uh, made the great point on, again, the <clears throat> bottom line is it's probably going to end up being city-owned, city land, but it is private, and there is a big question mark if private is the way you go, and if, then you go public. And that Mr. Timmons and I went and looked at that, and and it showed public. So we've got some conflicting, like got some conflicting info. Yeah, not a good answer. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'll meet I'll meet with them, and I'll, I'll meet with Mr. Pinto and get anything he has, uh, and bring that up to him. And I'll meet with you, Dave, and whoever else wants to come up. I know uh, Mr. Gavias, that's your forte. Uh, if you wanna. Take a spin up with me, get a meeting. I know it's a pain, but uh, and, Marty, can, I just, can I just jump in and just, just yes, just for clarification purposes for me? Sure. Yep, so the issue that we have basically 
Because the issue, I mean, let's hypothetically, let's say lot six never exists, right? And yeah. this, this is just parcel one. Right. So if it's just parcel one and Mr. Pinto is just trying to do his addition on parcel one. Right. Our right. issue with the public street is yep. essentially that it at some point could become a true street in, if that's right. ever lake again and that you're concerned that we're building too close to a public entity. Yeah. Okay. Two feet. Yeah, I think so. I think and that, that's close. what I was trying to figure out. If, if, if we just... If we now, if that's that, a private way, if it's private and, and, and they own that, someone owns this, then they can do what they want with it and we could figure this out and just make it land and it's done. But I'm hearing it's a public street. Now, if it's public street and the city owns it, we got we got to know that we got to know that we got to say okay someday this could change what do you want to do and council is that do i think it will no i don't but council. is it up to us to, to make those decisions what's going to happen no i don't think it is but we know council I'm yeah, you're trying to build something you'd like to know mr radell that's all i'm saying yeah, yeah no no i get that i just yeah. got a question for dave yeah dave did in in any of your conversations with, with with the solicitor is there like an opportunity here for the neighbors to come together like you're talking about to just say, hey, look, if if we just deem this as a private way today, you know, and go, go forward basis, let's not worry about what we did 250 years ago. If we deem it as a private way today and they come up with an agreement where Mr. Pinto can build his addition and and the neighbors can still have the access that they have today, it, did, did, did Solicitor Timmons feel like that, that that's a potential solution for us moving forward? Yeah. I think that all could be talked about. Exactly. We, that would we, all be talked about. Because it sounds like if you don't do that, you're just going to end up in land court fighting over this for the next three to five years. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what I wanted to talk to city solicitor. Is there any things? Because we've sold streets that were like that. You know, streets aren't going to be used and they're not even taxed. Why not Why not split them up between the neighbors? Let them take the piece of land. They get a big yacht each. It happened on, on uh, Rota Street. It's happened on a lot of streets. Okay. A piece of land yeah, is doing uh, nothing. Jim and I nothing. beat it up pretty good. In regards to your question and exactly what Marty yep. said, to try to just take this odd piece of land with this extra foot parcel and Get make it, it work. So that when if Mr. Pinto leaves and Mr. Markarian and Mr. Chen leave and move on, it'll be have an agreement, right? Yeah, and it won't be a mess for the next people that you know come yeah. in. Do I own this strip and yeah. how far yeah. is my yeah. fence? We're we're just trying to clean it up with the understanding. Right. That that public way, you know, will be there just like other public ways are down the neck. You know, they're mm -hmm. some of them are really well maintained, but they keep them open like they should. Right. Well, so so and, 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 and I and I don't I, I don't mean to belabor the point again, but I, I do get what it's like. Like I, if we vote on this thing tonight, hypothetically, and we pass it, good luck. You're going to be in court. Like it's like it, it, it's it's almost it's better to. It's better to try and figure this thing out, which is why we're asking for the extension so we can understand. Right. I understand, Mr. Riddell. Right. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll request that, right? I just want to, to last just add one more point. Sure. That parcel one was conveyed by the city of Quincy in, I believe, 1954 to the archdiocese. And when 1954, they that, okay. And when they did that, they referred to it as a private way. So the city has on record con called it a private way. Okay. Michael, wouldn't the, wouldn't the title examiner pulling an abstract be able to divine what has actually gone on here since 1954? Yeah. And Mr. Yeah. Pervais, I, I well, think yes, I believe oh. it, they would. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I don't look back 50 on this mm. parcel, let's see what has happened in the past. Ah. I was, um, John, I, I used to do this. I mean, I, I was pulling up the deeds and everything, and when I dove through it, I got all the way back to 1855. It looks like around that time they started selling off a number of parcels land, whether it was access or whether it was rights. And and when you get into that, it looks like this portion was just never deeded to anyone. I don't know if that was because it was. And if that's yeah. true, then the owner of that parcel is the city. City of Quincy. That's what I was going to say. It's going to default. It's the same thing as lot six. It's going to default back to the prior ownership. Now, you know, that's why I'm saying to get tied up in land court because somebody's going to come in and say, access this property this way for X number of years and good luck. You're going to have, you're going to have squatters rights, essentially. Yeah. Well, yeah. the other thing that Mr. Pinto should be worried about is that, you know, if he's going to sell this eventually, does he have clear title? 
That's right. property. That, that, that's yeah. not my problem. That's Mr. Pinto's problem. That may not be a problem. I'm just saying right. that. That's right, right. Uh, exactly. Which, yeah. Go ahead, Mr. Pinto. Okay, to your last point that you had asked, a, a title search was conducted on this, and the determination from the title search was that it is a private way. Uh, the same as the surveyors that have all surveyed it for the last 20 plus years have all determined that it was a private way. But they never determined who owned it. They, de they determined a private way and then. Um, but, 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 but my driveway is a private way. I no, know I own it. I know, they, they determined private way with ownership ha to the halfway point by parcel one. And then the same would be the same on, on the other side. And but I, I'm okay. True, that sounds an awful lot like a public way, a, pr a paper street. Which is owned by the city. Yeah. Right. You get halfway rights and there's nothing there. You have there. rights. And so uh, my okay, and okay. what concerns me is that Mr. Cavayas, everybody, I think I think I think we get to the point where we we know what we want. And uh thank you very much, Mr. Pinto, for putting this off for two weeks to uh the twenty third. And we should have an answer by the twenty third, I would hope. Uh or something figured out. And how's that, Mr. McCarthy? Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, is everyone okay with that in the board? Yeah. So if you mentioned we would meet up. Uh, do you? Uh, yes. Do you have a? Do you want to let me know what that is so I can make sure I'm around? Hey Marty. Uh, uh, yeah. One thing else, can we pull the decision on uh, on the subdivision of this lot by the? By yes. Because I'd like to yes. see that this that, that when we pulled, when we did this that we just left this sliver of land out there. Yep. Yep. I will get that. Uh. Yeah, I know. I remember when I, I was looking at that property. It's funny you say that. I, was, I don't know if I could live in a rectory. I said, I don't know. If, I don't know if it'd allow me to. <laughs> <laughs> not the big guy has good things. I don't know. I think he does, but who knows? Anyway, uh, I will. And Mr. Pinto, uh, I have your phone number on record here. I don't want to throw it out in the air. Uh, I'll give you a call, and we'll. Uh, I'll give you a call at night and find out a good time you can meet. Yeah, you have last. Last five or last four is five three one nine. Is that what you have? Five three one nine. Let me look. I can just send you a text direct. I can send you a message here directly as a chat, and you'll have it. Um. No, I only have the architect's phone number. All right. Uh. Can you email me, Mr. Pinto? I just sent it to uh, Mr. Aikens directly in chat. Perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Can you give me that phone number off chat that he just said? It'll come. And if, if not, I'll stop by your house and just leave a message in your mailbox, my phone number. Yeah, I'm here tonight. You can knock the door. I'm here. All right. All right. Can we make a motion? Uh, the applicant wants to move this for two weeks and then the 23rd. Mr. Bass, please. Yes, Mr. Chairman, the matter number 20 88, Paul Pinto for a very constructive addition of the premises number 10. 26 C Street. I make a motion to continue the hearing to March 23rd. Second. Uh, can we have a voice? I mean, a uh, roll call vote, please. Yes. Mike Coveas? Yes. Charlie O'Brien? Yes. John Himmel? Yes. Brian Riddell? Yes. Marty Akin? Yes. Thank you, everybody. Uh, I'll talk to you, Counselor. Yes, sir. I'll we'll all talk to you. Thank you very much for your time. Hanging in council for everybody. Further on to tonight's agenda. Under uh, C Street. We get C Street tonight? No. That was C Street. Quarry Street. Quarry Street. Get the long one in front of me. All right, next month. Quarry Street. Is there anyone here? What the hell is this paper? Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. Someone here. Where's my, where's my paper? Where's my paper? Oh, there he is. Further on to tonight's uh, new business, EBA 21 3. Malcolm Baba, manager. Baker Court LLC for a finding and variance to demolish the existing non conforming two family house and construct three duplex townhouses, six units, number 339, 341 Quarry Street. The applicant, a representative here. That was, the, that was, uh, good, good evening. Chris, Christopher Carroll no, is here. Was, uh, 
Hey, hey Chris, I always see your jaw. Okay. Chris. Yeah, here you go. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. You're up. Good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, Christopher Carroll for the applicant, Mal Malcolm Barber. This is a, in a, essentially a reinstatement of a previous zoning decision, Z1815, La uh, April 25th, 2018, the zoning board rendered a decision in regard to this project. Unfortunately, the applicant, uh, time went by and the applicant was not aware of the fact to request an extension in a timely fashion. So we reached out to the uh, building officials and the building department thought the best thing to do was basically to reinstate the previous decision through a new zoning application, which we did. Uh, before I go any further, I wanted to mention, we also have a active planning board decision that has been uh, extended till December, 2021. So tonight, it's the same application as 2018. We, we've advertised, we've talked to, uh, we've sent out a notice to abutters via the certified list. I reached out to Councillor Kane. He responded and thanked me for updating them. So uh, that's where we are tonight. You, you know, we're just asking for the reinstatement. We'll get a new number and hopefully you'll accept it and we'll be able to record and, and go on. Mr. Cowell, this is a brand new case as far as we're concerned. You're going to start at the beginning. You're going to tell us square footage, what you're doing, who's building it, architect, go through the plans. There's people hey, here that you. haven't heard this, maybe. Okay. It's a brand new plan, and it's not up to us just to redo. I just can't let the board okay. go. They wouldn't want to do that. Okay, that's fine. It's it's an, The existing conditions is 18,450 foot, 18,400 541 square foot lot and there's presently a non-conforming two-family house there and the goal is to take down this structure and create three <coughs> uh, duplex townhouses on the site with the number of uh, dwelling units will be a total of six so we're, we're looking for um, relief in the use regulations and in addition parking on the premises that's the two areas that we're looking for relief it's it's mirror like as i said and i understand totally um in regard to you know what you speak you want the whole new package to be submitted we have architectural drawings that were submitted in 2018 that were put with the project through uh through the architect and that right, you want to put them on the screen let the people see what you got uh i don't have the ability to put them on the screen i did okay. submit it in the package there's people that okay can we get it up on the screen mr duca like you know this is the applicant i mean he's these are things he's supposed to do not us i know no, I, under, I understand uh, no one you know renderings all this stuff there's people it's a brand new case mr cow you know it's okay, not I just we just can't people have to see what we're voting on everything's you know we don't we want everyone that's online that's here for this case to see exactly what's going to be built. Have some renderings of this place, what, what it's going to look like. And uh, I don't know if um, okay. we need to get them up there. Hold on one minute, Mr. Cow. Let me Thank see if you. Them up. Maybe he can go in and look at them. It's, uh, this is two. This two. This went. This went in front of the board twice. Right? This went in front of the board twice. I had a decision here in uh, so it's, let me see. Yeah, 1815. Huh? 1815, and then there was uh, another one. There's another uh, one. This one, where am I missing? And the rendering is, you know, I know that. Yeah, 1815 again. I just, it's in here twice. I don't know why. It's in here. We're bringing it up. No, I know. Thank you. I just, uh... you know, it's funny. The reason I don't remember it, I wasn't on it. <laughs> I wasn't. I look and I go, I don't remember. Everyone else here is on it, was on it. Yes. 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 So, where are we go? I don't know. 
don't know. Probably. I don't know. Maybe I was in a room. I don't know. Those are the good old days when you can go somewhere. I remember. Stuck Vaguely. in the house. Yeah, I know. <laughs> this is the one that backs up to the cliff. Correct. Yeah. It's, it's a two yeah. family. It's a two family that's going to be just demolished, and it backs up to the cliff on Quarry Street. Correct. What, weren't they using it as a, a, a sober house at one point? I'm not aware of that. It, it's a uh, vacant structure at this point. Yeah. I think it was. I, th I think it was. Yeah, okay. it was a sober house. I think it was. Um, Mr. That, uh, that, that yeah. motor place there. Yeah, uh, mi just a little history. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Barber took on the uh, permits that were granted for Mr. Dwyer. That in the zoning decision, so he took it, and then his only remaining task was to go to the planning department and receive a planning board decision. Did he? Yes, he did, and it's still active. The planning board decision that was September issued in 2019, and that's good till September. You said right? No, uh, excuse me. It's it, it's good till just December. We've extended it. Oh, December. Okay. Correct. So that's active. Yeah, twenty one. I just wanted people to take a, because I can't remember what it was going to look like. I, yeah. I, I don't see any renderings there. And I didn't know if you had any renderings. There, there, is, there are renderings. I'm sorry yeah. that uh, it's not up on the screen. It's uh, the three duplex, duplex townhouses, and it was uh, designed by uh, Chew and Company. Yeah. I just don't have them. In, in. Okay. Why aren't they in the application? I did. Uh, Reyes, O'Brien, Chin, Raydell, and Himmel. All right. I did. I did scan them with the application, uh, Mr. Akins, but I don't have them on placards to present tonight. I do you have them in yours? Because I don't have them in my pack. I have them in my packet, Mr. Chairman. You do? I did. Yeah, I have them as well. Renderings, the pictures of it. Oh. I have them too. Oh, oh, on the big piece. I thought it was one of the. I was looking in the back of the other one to see it. These are just. Oh, there they are. Eight, so two, two together two. in a one. Excuse me, sir. You got one standing alone and then two together? Yes. Oh. You got two on so one side and one on the other. All right. Yeah, they're all standing alone. At least three of them. Yes, three duplex townhouses. No, no. He's got he's getting it up on the screen now. Okay, folks. thank you so much. Give me a welcome. Uh can you ask if they can see it, please? Yeah, can everyone see that guys? Can I you see pack it? Your, your head the lot muddy. My head, yeah, well your head's in there. Uh, <laughs> I see you. Well, the only one I can see. What happened here? Come on. <laughs> there I am. Yeah, I see. It. Uh, Scavage, you want to run with this? You five guys did this before. You know exactly what's going on well, in there. Yeah, I, I think what we were looking at at the time is, uh, as uh, council will tell us, that this area has uh, a cliff, practically. And we thought that the house that was there was already uh, not supposed to be there because it's the residence A. And this was our big exception, I think, to uh, say, listen, this is better. Next to another townhouse, it's next to a repair shop. Yep. I think that's what we were thinking back at the time, though. I'm not going to speak for everybody else. No, no, no. I'm, I, do you want to run with it? Or some, you five guys, you want to want to take over the meeting and run with it? Or sure. You can, yeah, right? Sure. Yeah. Because you Thank guys, you. five guys, did it. Why don't you just go right over it again? It'll probably be easier than me getting in there. Uh, you guys are very well capable. Okay. So, uh, Mr. Cameron, Carroll, yeah. we were, sure. uh, just give us a quick kind of, the board members have seen this before, but it's been a few years. Okay. Again, thank you. Uh, the applicant, again, as as was demonstrated, was in a, it's, basically an abandoned home, a, a non-conforming abandoned two-family home. And, they, and they, they proposed to build the three new duplex condominiums 
consisting of six residential units with six garage parking spaces and 12 outdoor parking spaces, tandem spaces for a total of 18 parking spaces. The applicant also proposes landscaping, drainage, and other site modifications. The property is uh, 18,000 plus square feet of land and is located again at 339 through 341 Quarry Street. The property is located as uh, Member Kavea stated, a residence A district. So uh, we again, uh, there was there was concerns at that time uh, about you know uh, site it was a wind and shadow study at planning was waived. And there was a full traffic study done to um, to ensure that there'd be no public health and safety issues. So, come right up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, gentlemen, can you hear me? I can't see everybody. Can you hear Second. Okay. Um, I know. If you could, if you can get rid of that screen, so we all can see each other. Now, we all set with the screen. Thank you. Just a screen so we can get back to the people's faces. There we go. Mr. Gavayas, you're all set. Should come thank right Thank up. you. You're thank all. you. Does anybody have questions, Mr. Raydell? Uh, no, I remember this case. I remember the lot is, you know, the oddly shaped. I think that they had designed it well, and, and we were concerned about on-street parking, I remember, which had got well, one. Can I say one thing before you? Um, you know, so I, 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 I remember, you know, the use was – was about the best we were going to see on, on, a, on a parcel of land like this. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Yeah. Mr. O'Brien. Uh, no, I don't have any questions at this time. Mr. Himmel? Uh, no questions. I do remember there was going to be some substantial blasting, though. Is that still it? Yes. Are, are they going to uh, take that hill down by blasting, or are they going to chip it down? Well, I can't specifically speak to that issue, but that's something that we defer to for the building department, whatever requirements they set. Uh, we're, going, we're going to go through the protocol for the demolition of the home. And of course, we'll defer to what um, Mr. Duker and his team wishes. It is quite a rocky site. And the other issue too, of course, the traffic issue, we'll have to do it in a manner that we don't impact you know, ongoing traffic. So if you, if you wish, we can follow whatever directions, but I think they're the subject matter experts on uh, what manner we do it in. I know it does talk about that, Mr. Cavais, in here. Evidence and testimony that was presented talked yep. about that. Uh, so they're going to have to answer that. But Mr. Duca wanted to get in if he could. <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just wanted to. Um, just let the board know that I met with the attorney. He done his due diligence. I uh, wanted to let the board know that none of the building codes or zoning codes have changed since you initially approved this. The problem, uh, and he, they do have a valid um, uh, decision still from the planning board. And this right. is a decision that the, this board made uh, in 2018. Uh, as far as the blasting, there is new technology today that uses hydraulics. I don't know if that might be an option for this, but uh, whatever they need to do, we will make sure that they get all the proper permits and surveys and anything that needs to be done to remove the rock. Thank you. So it Thank might you. be better, Mr. Duca. It might be better now that um, we've waited a few years. The technology has gotten better for the blasting. <laughs> I, I think so, yeah. 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 It was a good good call by the petitioner. Uh, Mr. Chen. Yes, um, Chris, I had a question for you. I was looking at uh, page two of the plans. It refers to units A and B. On the first page of the plans where the units are numbered, um, and I just want to confirm, units A and B have um, have parking on the first floor, first level rather, as well as the outside has parking. Is that right? That's, that's the way it, I, you hit it right on point, yes. Okay, so when they say unit A and unit B, are those referring to styles of townhouse or? I believe they refer to, it's it's a model. It's a model. Okay. So in addition to the spaces, the parking spaces shown on the first page of the plans, there is also parking inside of these units. Is that right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Anybody want to speak in favor? Favor of this? One, 
twice, three times. Anybody, um, any correspondence, Maureen? No comment from no. the DPW. Okay, great. Anybody want to speak to Poser undecided? Poser undecided. Why don't you just do it? Once, twice. I don't see any hands. I don't see any hands. I don't see any hands. Bill, okay. I live on uh, one city view lane. And my only question is, will there be enough parking off street so that they don't park on street on top of the newly painted bicycle lanes and whatnot that have been uh, added as part of the um, Avalon mitigation? Hello, Mr. O'Neill. Absolutely. That was a concern with the planning department. And there is a, a parking plan with uh, actually more parking than if the existing structure would to remain. So we have plenty of parking on place and I had re I'll gladly read it into the record again what we'll have for parking if you'd like yeah. Yeah, so so you lots, you basically and they're all they're all specifically deeded is what it looks like Mr. Carroll is that correct correct right correct they go with the unit and uh, I can tell you exactly what it is I'll take the planning decision hit it right on point so we'll get it right here on second Uh, let's see, 18. Okay, here we here we go, Mr. O'Neill. The applicant, uh, it's it's the structures, and it'll consist of three garage, uh, excuse me, six garage parking spaces and 12 outdoor surface tandem parking spaces for a total of 18 spaces. So, um, applicant, and again, it will be fully landscaped. So, I I I believe that will be sufficient. We weren't looking for you know any more or any less so 18 spaces okay. works for me i think that's far exceeds our requirement mr mm -hmm. you know we, we'd ask for two per so we're, we're we have an additional spot per location per unit yeah. thank you citizen citizen rodefeld i know you're gonna yell at me go ahead you swear uh, by the way you said the truth the whole truth yeah, the truth? yeah, yeah I, go ahead. I do um, john rodefeld 62 grandwall road quincy um, I'm in support of this. We, we need, we need new growth. Um, I think I was in support of this before. I'm not sure if this was the building that we didn't like the way it looked or something. I know there was one on quarry street that we were saying that wasn't a good looking building. So, um, but the one thing I would like to ask Mr. Carroll, and I would like him to ask, um, his developer is that I was just watching the affordable trust meeting earlier today. And one of the things that we need is we need affordable housing. Now, the planning department isn't forcing you to do one of these units as affordable because the affordable housing law that we currently Nine have units, is yeah. one out of 10 units. If so we need to do 10 units, but you're doing six. The way I look at it is that if you had developed this six years, I mean, two years earlier, prices have gone up a lot. So it would be really nice if they would designate one of these units as affordable and sell it as affordable and just do something very altruistic. You're not forced to do it, but if you did it, it would be a good thing for the city and it would be a good thing for the developer. And if you come back here again, it would be a good thing. So, I mean, what we need as developers to do more than what they're expected to do yeah, not exactly. just the bare minimum so i just asked you to ask the developer because this is you know one out of six the average change of the rules john, we can't okay, i'll pass that along thank you thank you john thank okay all right all right everybody um anyone else no call that once twice three times the club party here and closed uh well i think we would look awfully silly if we decided that coming up a few years and we completely change our minds so i know i'll be in favor of this uh brian without charlie o'brien did you write this charlie he's on mute muted. he's muted who's muted charlie no. uh, oh, that was way back. i was taking a nap there for a minute and i didn't want you to hear me snoring uh, <laughs> okay. what do you think yeah um, I, I agree. I think that it's a good project for that location. I thought it was a good project the first time around, so I'm going to stick to it. Mr. Hill. I think it's a good project as well. as The remaining property there looks worse than it did two years ago, so I'm in favor. 
Yeah, true. <laughs> Mr. Russell. I am still in favor. I mean, Mr. Project. Chin. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in favor of the project. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chin. Uh, Charlie, you want to do a, a motion? Yeah, okay, you would. I don't have it here. Okay. Um, <laughs> now, wait, okay, okay, all right, all right. Uh, someone else want to do a motion? I got it. I got it here. Mr. Oh, Chairman, regarding it. case number ZBA 21-3, Malcolm Barber, manager, Baker Court, LLC, for a finding and, a vari and variances to demolish an existing non-conforming two-family house and construct three duplex townhouse buildings of six units on the premises number 339 and 341 Quarry Street, I make a motion to grant the requested variance. Second. Second, second. I'm motion okay. not all favor. Oh, let's do a roll call. Doreen. Roll call. Okay, Charlie O'Brien. Sure. John Himmel. Yes. Brian Riddell. Yes. Russell Chin. Yes. Mike Coveas. Yes. You guys are comedians. Hey, um, before not not on this, I, can I ask the attorneys of the board uh, before we close out this session a question on on uh, C Street? It's more oh, of a general, it's more of a general. Let me tell Mr. Carroll he's all set. Mr. Carroll, yeah, you're all yeah. set. You're Thank all you, everyone. I appreciate all right. it. Be all right, safe. Thanks, Be safe. It's more of a general question, and I think I'm trying to understand it. And I and, and it, so it doesn't. It's not really specific to the case. So. I went back and I'll, Marty, I'll send you everything that I did because oh, yeah. I went back. So I went back to the decision of 2008 and I, yeah. and I looked at all the filings for this subdivision of lot. And when they subdivide this, and I know that the applicant produced a, a document that showed this lot six, when they subdivide it and they, and they recorded it, there is no mention of a lot six. There is mention of lots one through five. There is never right. once a mention of lot six. That's so what I'm saying. He might have done that afterwards. But there's, there, no, they didn't. There's, there's, I, I went after. No, the, no, no. I'm saying they just might have wrote up a plan. He thought of six after he did it and said, I'm going to keep a foot in land. But yeah, if you go back, when you pull your zoning decision, Marty, right. no, it should, the, the it should be there. Decision, there is no mention of lot six in the zoning decision. There yeah. is just, in, the, in the land court decision. No, in, in, yeah, in the zoning, in the land court decision that's by us, there's nothing. And in fact, it's 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 recorded in the wrong place, Mike, because it's recorded in in register. Um, Where is it recorded? It's not it's not recorded in land court. It's recorded in land. It makes no sense. Like I'm surprised you found that registry in Lynn? No register. So, they, so once once we make a decision on this, Marty, you couldn't hear him. Once we make a decision, it, it moved from registered land to land court. It's where it's supposed to be filed. It's not. It's not filed over there at all, which is it's the whole thing is bizarre. And they have a huge title issue on their hand. And, you know, if I'm if I'm the neighbor, I just would hold them up for five years. personally. So it's not with the Registry of Deeds in Norfolk County. Hey, guys, we're still on a meeting here. Everybody, everyone's listening. I know there are two ways of recording land in Massachusetts. One we call land court or recorded land, you have registered land. Uh, it's mm -hmm. both the registry of deeds, but it's something special that goes on. It goes to land court and the city okay. goes there and it's in that system. Okay. okay. And so a subdivision and a and a and a zoning decision based on a subdivision of land would typically be read in, in recorded land after, correct Mike? Mm -hmm. You would think. Right. Well if it would come it doesn't have to be. It doesn't no. have to be, but if it has come from a decision of the land court, it should be there. So technically, does Sean Farrell still own that parcel of land? Yep, but correct. This is what I'm saying. There is so so when he subdivided. Yeah. There is no mention of this additional lot. That's what I'm confused at. There's no mention mm -hmm. of this lot six. Right. So I understand your original point that okay i subdivided my land and i just retained this little strip but right, there's, right. No, there's no mention of it anyway so well, that, that's what i'm saying why wouldn't it be that one strip it, was not conveyed to any one of those parcels that we subdivided it's just sitting there as is right it's part or, it's part or, of it's, or it could be in four and five you don't it, you, it, know, you like it, if i if i subdivided my lot today into three parcels hypothetically yeah. and i left right. off a single little that corner of five by five right. and i said i have 
lot one, lot two, and my lot three back here. I still have to mention lot three. I still have to tell yeah. you I'm breaking off lot three. That's what I'm saying. So no, someone should I, be paying taxes, and it should be in the records here that someone else owns that piece, right? I, I think what happens is if you go back and you look at the at the deed that he bought, yep. All right, and he sold pieces out of the deed. Whatever yep. he retained goes back to the deed that he the original deed that he bought. Those so it belongs pieces, to the diocese. But those yep. pieces don't. It doesn't make any difference. He can call it whatever he wants when he wants. He doesn't have to delineate a number on it or anything because it's still he still holds title on the original deed that he had. I, so he who owns it, it though? If he sold them all off except for one little piece, doesn't? So does the archdiocese own that? No, he he still owns it. Farrell owns it. He just never sold it. Oh, well, Michael, is that as as a remainder? It it's kind of, but it's it's the deed. It's, Isn't it's, there supposed it, it to goes be back to the thing? deed reference? The deed reference when he transfers that to the guy will mm -hmm. be the original deed that he bought from the archdiocese, and oh. then they can they can no. I'm saying Farrell. I know, but Farrell's the deed. No, parcel one is is separate. Parcel one never owned lot six. No, no, no. I'm talking about the strip. I understand that. That's lot six of this subdivision plan, Charlie. So he buys he buys this twenty five thousand square foot lot, whatever it yeah. is. You know, and you go and you see, and then he and it and it's it's showing when he buys it as lot one and lot two. And then he takes lot one and lot two, and he comes to the zoning board and he says, mm -hmm. "I'm going to subdivide subdivide this into five buildable lots." That's what he did. And he names, yes, correct. Right. He names those lots one through five. Yep. Right. And now, all of a sudden, out of thin air. That's what I'm saying. Lot six. Which I we would have asked him about that. that. We all would have asked it's him. Not, what no, it's, not, it's not out of thin air. It's in this plan that. that yeah. And, and it's, the re, it's the remainder from the original subdivision. Oh, no, it was right. in a plan that was never shown, though. That doesn't matter. matter. He doesn't have to show a plan. He shows the plans of the ones that were taken out, and whatever's left over, that's what he owns. I'm going to pull this case tomorrow. Yeah, we got to look at this whole thing this week. Uh, I'm just Mike, asking. I'll give you a call. We can meet. Anyone else want to go up and sit with the city solicitor? I can see if I can get an appointment this week. I'm just fascinated by it, so I'd love to because I love I love nonsense like this that happens. Yeah. <laughs> Sean Farrell has a case on the 23rd if you want to get him. <laughs> Just saying. I'll tell you, whoever did that, whoever left that foot. Well, he's going to be in it. With he's the pretty other. sharp he's at what they did. Washington Street on. They're, they're very sharp, either the, the surveyor or the con, or the conveyance of the attorney to hold that piece to adjacent to that street. That's, yeah. a, that's a wise, wise, tricky man that did that. <laughs> That would be the little leprechaun himself. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, I make a uh, motion to adjourn. Second I second that. <laughs> All in favor, of voice vote. Aye. 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 Gentlemen, thank you very much. You all got my Aye. phone number you Aye. need me. Aye. And Aye. I got Aye. yours to hunt you down. Thank you. Thanks, thank you. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Aye. Thank you very much. Aye.